Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have just finished over 12 hours reading the Quran to a live audience. The whole idea was that I would do something good for charity, to give back to the community and particularly to those who have supported me throughout my whole journey, starting as a evangelist who went to Speaker's Corner two years ago and is now finding himself very much engaged with ministry to Muslims. So I partnered up with a charity called World Vision, who are a Christian charity that help provide water, food, shelter, basic necessities to children who are struggling across the world, largely in war-torn countries who desperately need help. I thought this was uh, an idea everyone could get behind. And so I was willing to put myself in a very painful position where I would read through as much of the Quran as I possibly could in a 12 hour period. Now I went a little beyond this, it was more like 14 hours. Um, I got to a point where I was kind of close to collapsing really out of exhaustion. But thanks be to God, we absolutely shattered and destroyed the target I was aiming for. I was hoping to raise about 500 pounds or about 600 and 50, I think, 650-ish dollars for children in need. However, we managed to raise just under $1,500. And that completely blew my expectations. That's more than double than I was expecting or even hoping to get. So the fact that we managed to do that, God bless you all, everyone who watched, everyone who moderated, and everyone who donated, you guys are awesome. But the big question is, ladies and gentlemen, before I tell you whether or not it changed my mind. I want to show you just this quick video for the charity that I raised money for during the live stream. For the past 60 years, we've been partnering with people like you to help children and communities break free from poverty. But have you ever wondered how we use your donations to actually do that? We combine gifts from sponsors to benefit all children in a community, then leverage other gifts, products, and grants so we can do even more. When we begin working in a community, we start by following Jesus' example of coming alongside and listening. We sit down with children, families, churches, and community leaders. We listen to their unique challenges and needs. Do they need clean water, better schools, a dependable supply of food, basic healthcare, local jobs, what opportunities do they see? Next, we work with them to develop a five-year action plan that will address the root causes of their challenges and bring fullness of life for all children. Once the plan is drafted, we help them put it into action. We work with their existing leaders and empower new ones, bringing the community together to address the needs they've identified. And if something in the action plan isn't quite working as well as it should, we go back and change it, so it does. But it doesn't stop there. We don't just help a community get the things they need, like healthcare, education, clean water, nutritious food, and economic opportunity. We also train them so they know how to best care for and grow these new resources so they will continue to have them for years to come. When the community has grown healthier, safer, and more self-sustaining, then we transition out and move on to the next community in need. By now, the community is a better place for children to live and grow, and they are more equipped to handle emergencies, and can even turn around and help their neighbors. From beginning to end, this transformation is made possible because of people like you. Who are passionate about helping children and communities reach their God-given potential to break free from poverty. But the real question, ladies and gentlemen, is, did I change my mind? I've been a Christian for over 10 years now, actually quite a bit more than 10 years, more like 15 years. Did I change my mind after reading the Quran for more than 12 hours, non-stop, using the biggest Quran that I could possibly find? The answer is no. Definitely not. Which is probably not a surprise to many of my subscribers here at Chris's Speaker's Corner. But yeah, I did not find it convincing. In fact, it was it was incredibly difficult and straining. To anyone who's ever read the Quran, you'll realize that it often jumps to different contexts without any prior warning or lead up or build up. There's no narrative. It's just lots of short stories that often repeat endlessly. The amount of times I read about Moses throwing his staff down and it turned into a snake and then it beat the magicians at their game and then the magicians prostrated towards Allah was oh it was a lot it was it was a lot and um 
you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad it's done. But it was for a good cause. But yes, I'm afraid to say I have not changed my mind at all. In fact, it has indeed confirmed a lot of what I previously thought. The Quran contains many stories of which are known to be from other works. It is not a original work. It is a work of collected stories that existed prior that have been compiled together into a single collection. Another reason why I don't particularly feel inclined to accept Islam is the amount of times it just threatens you. <laughs> like, if you're a Christian or a Jew or a polytheist, I guess, you will feel incredibly threatened when you read the Quran because you will get to certain points that just basically say, look, uh, we're coming for you. <laughs> And I know that Muslims will say, look, there's a historical context to this. They'll try and get out of it that way. But the fact is, is that the caliphates who succeeded after Muhammad interpreted it the way that I interpreted it. They did indeed go out, conquer many lands, and kill many Christians and Jews unless they paid the jizya. Surah 9, Surah Tawbah, Ayah 29, seems to, from a historical point of view, been the basis for a general tafsir for the caliphates to go and do exactly that. And since the caliphates are some of the best examples you have after Muhammad, that doesn't leave me with much confidence to the people who would try and argue that that shouldn't be the interpretation and that's not what we ought to do. If you can't follow Muhammad and you can't follow the caliphs who followed Muhammad, I'm at a loss. It still generally just comes across as a very threatening work. There are verses that I read that talked about how the Jews are those who Muslims will constantly have issues with. Yes, that to be fair, seems like a good prophecy from the Quran. But if you start out by threatening them, that kind of seems like that was inevitable. Throughout the live stream, I gave a little bit of commentary, more so in the early side of the video. Um, near the late side of the video, I was slowly dying. So I sort of focused more on just getting things read. I managed to read to Surah 28, which is just under half of this huge Quran. Yeah, so here was my bookmark. That's how much I read. I'll be posting the whole videos. YouTube only has a 12 hour length of time that it will accept a live stream for. And anything after that, it just cuts off and it doesn't care about. It. But fortunately, I have a local copy. I made my own local copy of the entire thing. It took up about three quarters of my hard drive, but nonetheless, I do indeed have it. So I will be posting that for anyone who wants to watch the whole thing. Will I finish it? That is a good question. It depends how much I hate my own sanity or I hate my own well-being. I really did push myself through this. I had only had about five hours sleep prior. I had to get up very early in the morning. I was up by about half four in the morning so I could prepare for six to then start and then do the whole thing for 14 hours with only periodic breaks. And if I did do it, to be honest with you, I'd probably want to raise more money for charity so I can kind of justify doing it. Next question, will I now do the same thing for the Bible? That's a really good point. However, I have noticed that despite how big this book is, the Bible is an even bigger book. <laughs> <laughs> and although I would thoroughly enjoy reading it more, it would also, you probably would thoroughly enjoy watching it more, it's going to also be incredibly taxing to try and read as much of the Bible as I can in 12 hours, for example. So I might break it down. Uh, I might do reading the Gospels in one sitting. I think that's achievable. I'm pretty confident I could read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in one go. I've read like Matthew and Mark in one go. So I don't know, maybe. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments. And hey, maybe I'll do another live stream for charity that where it's me going through those. Or maybe it's certain books from the Old Testament or certain... Uh, Pauline letters or parts of the New Testament. In short, I gave it a good go and I wasn't convinced, unfortunately, but it wasn't too much of a surprise to me since I already have read the Quran in my own time, not in, uh, not in 14 hours, I can tell you that, but for a period of about three months. So I already have read the Quran and I know what's what to expect. And of course, I'm pretty sure that it's not a surprise to any of you who are watching that I have not been convinced at all, but rather been very much reaffirmed in my beliefs. And right now I feel like I'm relishing a Bible study just to sort of move <laughs> move past the Quran. Uh, and, uh, and I think just for some good spiritual well-being and spiritual health. So thank you for watching, especially if you were a part of that live stream. That was absolutely awesome. We achieved so much. If you're not a Christian, then today is the day. You can email me at chris at speakerscorner at gmail.com and I will do my best to get back to you and answer any questions you have about the faith. Other than that, God bless you all. I hope you have a great day. Take care.